talked about issues. Um, oh, by the way, I should say that the issues we're talking about are the issues that this Transportation Policy Committee has, has addressed and been talking about over the past few days, a few months. Um, one of the earliest ones was this uh, five points roundabout concept. Many of you may have seen it in the Valdez Daily Times about a month ago. Uh, they did a nice write up on it. Uh, it's it's a way to, it's a concept, again, this again is not in stone. It's just a concept on how to address uh, the bottleneck of five points. That's just gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. And I know it's been frustrating to a lot of people. And Corey's got less hair this, these days because of it. Uh, but it, again, it's not in stone. If there's some comments on that, that's nice. I, I just want to throw this out and correct me if I'm not correct. Um, but this, the roundabout deal, is a GDOT deal. Uh, no local taxpayer money goes in. So it, it's a. And it's mostly both. So this is good. Um, but you can see it back there, and I think there was some handouts. Yes, good. Yeah, okay. Um, but it, it's, uh, I tell you, it would be a whale of a project. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to address this project, we'd be happy to hear from. I just want to hear it. Yeah. I'll, I'll say a few words. I think the biggest thing that concerns me as an elected official, and what I've been hearing, is just a, a lot of misperceptions about uh, roundabouts and how they function, uh, a lot of fear of the change, etc. that a project of this nature could bring to this section of our city, which happens to be in my district. Um, and I, I really would like to just ask everybody to keep an open mind. First of all, um, second of all, this is an F-rated intersection. Can't get any worse. It can only go up. Um, the historical data, based on uh, professional traffic engineers, shows that roundabouts do work and work very efficiently and safely. Uh, and then, last but not least, unless you're a professional traffic engineer, all you're doing is throwing an opinion out there. You don't know all the details, and you know. GDOT's got tons of professional track kids here, and we need to let them do their work. But uh, I just hope people will have more of an open mind. Uh, some of the comments that I've heard uh, directed, you know, this person has been sharing them with me, some I've seen posted on social media, uh, that it, this isn't something to be afraid of. This is going to help take a very bad and dangerous intersection and make it a lot safer. I agree. I mean, this config, the, the way it's currently configured, I mean, you see the value you do another spaghetti junction kind of thing like they did in Atlanta. We don't have the room for that. Uh, Corey or Pat or anybody else that may know, what's the traffic count through here, roughly, daily? Vehicles moving through this area. I haven't looked in a long time, so it's right. about 22,000 cars. And what, what was the Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones is uh, about, about the same, same as the interstate traffic, by the way. Basically, that being the North Island Road, road is, yeah, like Tim said, a lot of interstate traffic. Um, and uh, I'll address this one. The numbers of the yeah. all the interstate traffic is what it calls it. Had any cars is what they call it. A lot of cars. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so what's your name? Dean Blackman, <laughs> General Utility Man. Uh, <laughs> what determined all this? <laughs> yeah, sorry, Chris. The, uh, the roundabouts are a fact. Is that correct? Or has that been confirmed yet that we're going to get those at five points? It's not a given by any stretch. I, I thought we were going to answer, but we'd have to have public hearing. What do we need to do to promote it? Yeah. No, but this. Yes. Okay, what I would like to say, of course, is being a man, uh, a well traveled man, I've seen one of these before. <laughs> you go to Hilton Head, South Carolina, or Thanks, Simon. These are terrific ways of uh, moving traffic. I don't know what the traffic count is at St. Simon or Hilton Head, but I would assume it's, it, it's huge at times. I know you almost get caught up in the roundabout, but I'd like for us to promote this and get it as quickly as we can. That having said, I'll take my questions. <laughs> 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 oh, <there. laughs> Thank you, Dean. And Tim, let me ask you this, and I'll put you or G-Dot on, on the spot. Is there, I know this a long way out, 
Was there sort of a time frame, loosely uh, speaking? I don't know about that. Time frame, but once we, uh, They're actively looking at Oh, this. absolutely. Okay. Uh, when I got on the board two years ago, Russell had several photos there about us and Lamb County, which one of which was roundabout. So we discussed, we discussed this and looked at these issues. I can just tell you, Moultrie has four roundabouts now, I think. And, uh, and I know there was a lot of moaning and groaning when they put them in that people like And I will tell you, they're safer too. Uh, if you have an accident, it's usually, you know, somebody's running into somebody's fender. I mean, that's good as a fender bender. And that's the good news. Nobody's going to be hurt. Traffic lights and stuff, the old poor rear end. Accidents are why it's very hard to get one. Roundabouts are safe. Having been in Washington, D.C. a good bit in my lifetime and earlier years, DuPont Circle comes to mind. And people, once they get used to it, it moves traffic and it's very efficient. And I don't know what else you do here, quite frankly. Um, if you go back historically, I mean, to the 80s or whatever, when we were talking about one way and doing all these different things, where the traffic's gone and exploded for me when we were looking at all that. And, and Tim's right, Tim's dead on with it. And uh, he brings me comments. But Russell McMurray is an engineer, he's had every job at GDOT. District engineer, he's a professional engineer, he's been chief engineer, national commission, and uh, he likes this. And, uh, and I trust Russell McMurray. He's probably the best commission we've ever had at the GDOT. And, uh, and I don't mind saying that. I've, I've served under quite a number of them in years. But Wayne Shackleford was good, Russell McMurray's as good as we've ever had. But I think that's a good solution. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Please. Start off by saying I'm Pat Collins, city engineer, and we are the members of the chamber. Um, I just thought I would add some detail um, to the discussion of history here. But first of all, I understand that the chamber, Vernon has, has spoken, the chamber endorses the roundabouts and fire um, I'm going to tell you that when I came here seven years ago, we were looking at roundabouts at that point. And, you know, my interest, especially moving to this area at the time, was to propose something that worked. And I have been around the world like this gentleman here that have seen other places. And I tell you, when I was 19 years old, I was over in, in Italy driving these things in Naples. And they've been around for a long time. Um, the roundabout will handle about 36, a dual roundabout will handle about 36,000 vehicles per day. Which, um, and right now we've got Level service have out there. Um, some of the important things to remember is that traffic keeps moving in a in a in a roundabout. You yield as you go into it. Um, speeds are typically 15 to 20 miles per hour. Um, you don't have the stacking that you have at conventional four-way intersection because you don't have to provide that room for it because cars continue moving. You've been to St. Simons or you've been over to Mary Island. You've been to a roundabout. I know that even down in Sarasota, Florida, where I um, was raised down there, on US 41, they've got them put in down there. So it's not foreign to the, you know, to the DOT putting them in on, on, on US 41. Um, some of the important things also to remember is that injury collisions, they're much safer, as Mr. Bolton uh, pointed out. There's 75% reduction in accidents at, at a roundabout. There's a 90% reduction in fatalities. And the reason being is you have somebody being rear end or side or that type of thing, but, but you, you eliminate the conflict points. In a traditional uh, intersection, you have 32 potential angles at which you can have accidents. There's only eight in the roundabout. Um, I will also tell you that the less expensive to operate a conventional in intersection will cost from five to $10,000 a year just in electricity <coughs> to those intersections. You don't have that. I'll also say that if you have a blackout, you don't need any, you're not depending on electricity to make your intersections work. Okay? Um, the, um, it's a known fact that 63% of people who use the roundabout who may have been opposed to a front are opposed or are in favor of them. And only about 15% after they've used them uh, remain um, strongly opposed. Um, so that's basically my three minutes. I put my timer on. 
But um, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. How do, since the traffic is always moving, how do you envision crosswalks uh, as you come to these roundabouts? Well, typically um, they're designed into them. The good thing about it, about it, a crosswalk at a, at a roundabout is you don't have two-way traffic. Um, as you're crossing over them, you only have to focus in one direction the way that they split off. So you concentrate on moving quickly. Right. <laughs> 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 they do have crosswalk, they do have uh, lights, and again, you can see two cross, you're only crossing uh, traffic in one direction, not in two directions. So typically they are safer. So these, these would have crosswalks at the appropriate Correct. places, right? Two people. Yeah. Not, not a lot of foot traffic. And I, I also have one comment for you. Uh, um, when I was serving at Moody, we had an issue where we needed to put some, we had some intersections that were very close to Bemis Road. And it was, we felt it was too close to put another traffic light just inside the base, at maybe 100 yards inside the base, because it was going to cause traffic to back up on Bemis, which we all know is an issue. So we wound up putting two roundabouts in. And that got some pushback then. And now there's like five roundabouts out there. So, <laughs> It's kind of taken on a life of its own, and they've seen the value of, of and the functionality of the roundabouts at the base. Right. Uh, Pat, I had a question for you. Use the term dual roundabout. Is that what that is? More than one? Well, first of all, that's a dual roundabout out there. But I, mean, I was also saying 35,000 per day. I was talking about a dual lane, two lanes as opposed to one lane. You can handle it 35,000. So we did have two two lane roundabouts. Right? That, that's what that's what's being proposed here. If if I can. In just 20 more minutes, I can just tell you what I know. I know that, um, as Mr. Goldman has already pointed out, that the process for um, doing uh, projects within DOT, because they have to you know these federal uh, uh, regulations and things as they do them, to purchase the right of way to make sure that there's no historical or you know, critters that are being destroyed. They've got to make sure that any federal money is not adversely impacting another federal law. So that in itself draws the process out. But it is scheduled to be led, this particular project, for preliminary design. There is really no big preliminary design. This is the only thing that I've ever seen uh, come out. And, um, but it is programmed this summer to, um, to go to preliminary design. So, um, uh, and you know, you've got, like Mr. Bolton said, some of the best staff up there at UIT, and trust me, they've looked at this intersection, and unless you get some type of draconian uh, uh, proposal like to shut down Oak Street or eliminate some of the legs or something, you're just, you're not going to be able to handle this type of intersection. <coughs> so, um, you know, uh, the process is starting. Uh, Mr. Golden's correct, it's going to take probably five years probably to get all the way through the process, the process is how it gets designed and in place, but um, this should be the way for the I have one more question for you. I've seen on social media some um, rants about, well, we just spent all this money putting these new traffic lights up with the with one arms as opposed to the cables. Will those be reused at other intersections, or will we have to They can always be Yes, um, I know that when DOT takes up their their equipment, it goes back into their yards and they use it elsewhere. Um, typically, those those mask arms were put up along uh, Ashley Street. Uh, not only do they eliminate cables, but they're better for high winds. And those things that use them. Typically, I will say though, an arm and a pole on those are designed specifically for that intersection. However, they can be used and they're used in different places. So, yeah. I'm just supposed to think. Right. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Very cool. Right.